Well, hey everybody, and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be looking at some clips from William Lane Craig and Jordan Peterson regarding the myth objection to Christ. Basically, atheist trolls on the internet love to put forward the idea that Christ is just the kind of amalgamation of all of the dying and rising gods throughout mythological history. And today, we're going to see how that simply is not the case. So let's take a look. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the video, and we'll be right back to break this down. Remember I mentioned that New Testament scholarship has tried all these other things before. And one of them back in the late 19th century, early 20th century was this attempt to compare Christian beliefs to what one could find in other ancient religions. And one of the things that was tried was to look at supposed resurrection myths of dying and rising gods like Osiris and Tammuz and Adonis and, and so forth. And some of the scholars at that time thought to try to explain away the Christian belief in the resurrection as a result of the influence of these pagan myths of dying and rising gods. Well, that movement soon collapsed within New Testament scholarship. And these internet people who are still pushing it are over a hundred years out of touch with scholarship on this issue. Why did it collapse? For two reasons. Number one, the, the parallels turned out to be spurious. In fact, there are no parallels in ancient mythology of dying and rising deities. For example, Osiris, one of the most popular of these myths, doesn't really come back to life at all. He just continues to live in the nether realm of the dead, in the, in the underground realm, realm of the departed dead. He doesn't come back to life in, in this world. Um, and a, a Swedish scholar named Trig Mettinger recently did a study of these dying and rising gods. And he says that among scholars who still think that there might be dying and rising gods in the ancient world, these are regarded as dinosaurs in scholarship today. And he tries to salvage just a couple that look like they could be dying and rising gods, but even he admits they don't have any parallels to the resurrection of Jesus. The resurrection of Jesus is a Jewish idea that is without parallel in other ancient religions. The second reason that this movement collapsed was in any case there's no causal connection between these pagan myths and the first disciples of Jesus. Um, I mentioned before that what has happened in New Testament scholarship in the 20, latter half of the 20th century has been the eclipse of mythology as a relevant category for the historical Jesus and the rediscovery of the Jewishness of Jesus. And it was, re it was realized that it was simply the wrong interpretive background to try to understand Jesus of Nazareth and the Gospels against the backdrop of these Greco-Roman and other sorts of pagan myths of, of uh, dying and rising deities so that there just isn't a causal connection. Jews were aware of these pagan religions and they found them abhorrent. And so there are no cults of these uh, seasonal dying and rising gods in first century Israel, no trace at all. So the idea that the disciples would sincerely come to believe that Jesus of Nazareth was actually risen physically from the dead on the basis of these, these myths is just utterly implausible. And so for that reason, this is a movement that has been tried and found wanting in New Testament scholarship and doesn't command significant scholarly following today. So, okay, so you can think about Christ from a psychological perspective and the, the, criti the critic, my critic, this particular critic that I've been reading, said, well, that, that doesn't differentiate Christ much from a whole sequence of dying and resurrecting mythological gods. And of course, people have made that claim in comparative religion, Joseph Campbell did that, and Jung to a lesser degree, I would say, but Campbell did that. But the difference, and C.S. Lewis pointed this out as well, the difference between those mythological gods and Christ was that there's a, there's a representation of, there's a historical representation of his, of, of his existence as well. Now you can debate whether or not that's genuine, you can debate about whether or not he actually lived and whether there's credible objective evidence for that, but it doesn't matter in some sense because this, well, it does, but there's a sense in which it doesn't matter because there's still a historical story. And so what you have in the figure of Christ is an actual person who actually lived plus a myth. And in some sense, Christ is the union of those two things. The problem is, is I probably believe that. 
but I don't okay. know. I don't, I'm amazed at my own belief and I don't <laughs> understand it. Like, because I've seen, sometimes the objective world and the narrative world touch you know that's union synchronicity yeah. and i've seen that many times in my own life and so in some sense i believe it's undeniable you know we have a narrative sense of the world for me that's been the world of morality that's the world that tells us how to act it's real like we treat it like it's real it's not the objective world but the narrative and the objective world touch and the ultimate example of that in principle is supposed to be christ but I don't know what to, and that seems to me oddly plausible. Yeah. Well, but I still don't know what to make of it. It's too, it, partly because it's too terrifying a reality to fully believe. I don't even know what would happen to you if you fully believed it. If you believed in the story of Christ, or if you believed that history and, and let's say the narrative make meet, let's Both, say. Both, I yeah. think, I think you, because when you believe that you buy both those stories you believe that yeah. the narrative and the objective can actually touch all right so there was a lot in those two clips but first i really want to talk about craig's uh approach to this whole issue and he really takes that academic angle and it may seem that they were taking like contradictory positions but i'm going to show through this commentary that it's really not the case. I really think they're simply coming at the same issue from two different angles. Craig's approach is definitely more along the academic history. He doesn't seem to really like to mess with things that don't have uh, some kind of academic uh, substantiation. And so as he points out, there in the late 1800s, early, uh, the early 1900s, there was a kind of launched effort in scholarship, that is New Testament scholarship, to see if there is any connection between these dying and rising gods of Egyptian mythology and so on and so forth. He mentioned several of them like Osiris and Tammuz and uh, Adonis and those kinds of things. And I think that Dr. Craig really did a good job showing how on an academic level, these concepts do not hold water. And I do think that they had their credibility undermined by the fact that nothing really took traction in the academic community for there to be any kind of real connection between these supposed dying and rising gods, rising god myths, and the physical historical resurrection of Jesus Christ. One thing that Craig doesn't really deal with is the literary um pattern that we find in many uh whether it be movies books or narratives in general um dr craig doesn't really get into that element of it and i think that's where jordan peterson's approach really weighs in where dr craig shows that there's no real significant evidence for any connection between ancient myths and the resurrection of jesus and therefore it's not even worthy of observation, I think that Jordan Peterson picks up on a different wavelength. He, he kind of embraces the idea of dying and rising gods or uh, the concept of death and burial and resurrection as a literary concept, uh, certainly quoting certain authors that do make those connections between some ancient myths and Christ but it doesn't seem that he takes any position uh, that would put him in the crosshairs of Dr. Craig because I think Dr. Craig is really just dealing with those who are trying to say that the resurrection isn't true and that it is a, an invention of the disciples. And I think Craig is dealing with that objection, whereas JP is really dealing with the idea that psychologically you find this idea of death, burial, and resurrection expressed in many literary you know, narratives throughout history because it seems to be a psychological component of the human makeup. And he kind of broke down when he began to really uh, give 
thought to the reality that there's actually a historical reality that was manifested in Christ between something that seems to be both a literary and psychological feature of human history. And so I do think both of them are kind of aiming at different targets in this regard, but there there's a lot of conclusions that both of them draw that seem to come into agreement. Both of them ultimately in these clips affirm the resurrection as a historical event. Craig is dealing with those who would try to discredit the resurrection on the level of saying the, the disciples invented it based upon the blueprints of some maybe Egyptian gods or other pagan uh, you know, religious systems, whereas Jordan Peterson is coming at it from the angle of, well, throughout history, there have been many narratives and stories told along the lines of death, burial, and resurrections as some kind of psychological reality to the human makeup, and he surprisingly admits that there is a historical reality to that feature being fulfilled in the one man, Jesus Christ. So I find both of these clips to be kind of giving almost a, a nice uh, targeted approach from two different worlds, one from the academic world, one from the literary world, but showing the same agreement at the conclusion, Christ indeed has risen from the dead. I hope this video was something that got you thinking. If you have never had an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life, today is the opportunity to do that. I make these videos because my life was transformed by the resurrected Christ. And I want to live the rest of my life inviting others to experience the same kind of transformation that I did. And so if you haven't done that today, I am praying that God is touching your heart, drawing you near, and through being able to put your faith in the one true God and His Son, Jesus Christ, who rose from the dead for our justification, who shed His blood on the cross that we might have our sins atoned for and removed, I pray that you will make today your day to put your trust in Him. If you've done that, let me know in the comments how we can be praying for you. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing that. Also, take a moment, like, and share the video, and we look forward to seeing you in the very next one. God bless.